Hello and welcome to your 30 minute limb drainage practice. Today is going to be a little bit of yin and a little bit of movement where we use breath and muscle activation to support the lymphatic system and also to encourage the rest and digest system of the nervous system to activate. So our parasympathetic nervous system where we are in our healing mode, our rest and digest mode. So to get started, we're going to start with legs up the wall, Viparita Karani. Um, you might bring yourself quite close to the wall, you might have a little bit of space between your buttocks and the wall, depending on the openness of the back line of the body. So you can bring yourself up against the wall, buttocks against the wall. You could strap the feet with a little view. That might just give you a little more stability. We feel like the legs are falling all over the show. Just to strap the feet is sometimes a nice bit of support. We're going to interlace the fingers, lift the head, and raise the head in the hands. If that is too much for you, if that, if that doesn't feel great, in either the neck or the shoulders, you can simply take the arms out into a T-shape. Yeah, otherwise, raising the head in the hands as we arrive at our practice, getting straight into it as we open up the lungs, open up the armpits, and immediately start to drain the legs. You can allow your feet, your ankles, and the legs to be fully relaxed. The belly is relaxed. The whole back body is connected to the floor. And then using that little lift of the hands to tuck the chin slightly and get some space between the skull and the vertebrae in the back of the neck. Eyes can close and we'll just arrive at the practice. Cross all the way around the internet of the fingers behind the head. And then bring your awareness to your brain. Notice how the breath changes the moment you bring your awareness to it. You might feel like you need to take a deep breath in and sigh out. It might be a sneeze, it might be a cough, it might be a yawn. As we start to bring attention to our airways and to how the body, the breath is moving into the body and how the body moves as the breath moves in.
release the hands, bend the knees, and we're just going to roll ourselves up, coming onto all fours. So palms are going to be spread, knees on the hips, getting some movement in the spine and getting the breath flowing. Move through a few rounds of cat cow. So your inhale, you're going to lift the sit bones, just take the pelvis now forward, ears are going to curl back. And then exhale, curl and round. Tailbone sinks down and chin curls in. We're just going to keep moving like that. So in between the cat and your cow. Really gently. And feeling into shoulder girdle and pelvic girdle. That little bit of muscle activation, that squeeze and release. Encouraging the liquid to move the body.
just going to keep going from side to side. Super gentle through the spine, gentle with your movements. Feeling a little squeeze into the armpits. And if the mind starts to attach to anything or anyone, just bring it back to sensation in the body and to breath. So we don't want to, using it as a, as a moving meditation does not mean that the body's kind of on automatic, uh, on autopilot and the mind is wandering in a million paces, but rather that we're able to just be here in this moment, in this movement. One breath at a time, Feeling the constant change as you inhale, as you exhale, as you move from right to left. Picking up no tension in the body. In fact, as we move further into the practice, the body relaxes more and more. under the skin. All right, and then the eyes can open. We're going to move into our swaying practice. So just to show you, as we move the hands forward, we'll have our palms facing up. And as we move down, we'll have our palms uh, facing down. So we move back, our palms will face down. But relaxing the arms at first, we're simply going to start to rock forward and back on the feet. Just going to rock full back of the feet, nice and soft in the knees. Even this is stimulating to the lymphatic system. How magical is that? The smallest, simplest things can have the biggest impacts. Less really is more, I believe, when it comes to our health practices. Alright, so we start to move the hands grip. We're going to keep the palms up as you move forward and back down as we move back. So we're going to keep moving. You can see my arms are moving quite high, but I'm not swinging my torso back and forth because that's going to make you feel a little fatigued. So, yes, the body is going to move slightly forward and back, but not too much. It's most of the arms that are getting a nice swing. And then same with the breath here, you can either take a nice slow exhale, so it sounds something like this. Alright, so almost like you two swings per exhale, or you can do one swing per exhale, so it'll be more like this. So completely up 
to you. I like to do two swings per exhale. It feels a little more relaxed to me. I can keep my breath and my heart rate a little more steady. But I still get that nice squeeze. So we're wanting the diaphragm to move. And then getting that nice little pump action through the feet and up the legs. Arms are getting a nice drainage. And of course, releasing through the lungs. Start to slow down. Until you're standing. Again, just bring the feet to the hip distance. Take a nice big view of the shoulders, palms facing forward. Firm up through the body. Relax the shoulders down, eyes can close. Just settle into yourself, settle into your own energy. lot of the body we're just going to do a few little moments you can just stay standing a few little moments of moving a little bit of tapping on the face so from the midline out underneath the jaw out to the side just get a little bit of stimulation activation here a little bit of tapping around the head maybe the back of the head underneath the jaw this is really something you should be doing every day. Especially if you've got sinus stuff going on, tapping around the sinuses. Here, we're just going to take the lowest setting of our block. So 
placing the hips on the block. If you don't have a block, then you can just pop a cushion underneath you, maybe a couple of books. You just feel the pelvis resting on the block. If that's enough, stay there. You could extend the legs. We're not going to be up super long. You're going to reach the arms up above the head. We're just going to take a nice opening and stretching out of the front line of the body.
you'd like to stay a little longer and you have time, feel free to do so. Otherwise, you'll make your way into a nice full body stretch, take a deep breath in, and a sigh out. The knees can bend as you roll onto your side and slowly press yourself up into a seat. Let's bring palms together in heart centre, sternum and thumbs touching as you bow your head down. And as our body naturally takes in what it needs and lets go of what it does not. So can we too take that and let go of what is not serving us mentally, emotionally and energetically. Grateful for our time on our mats, for everything that our bodies do, and for the practice of yoga. Eyes can open when you're ready, gaze can raise. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you enjoyed that practice. Um, again, as always, these are things that you can do daily. Five minutes, 10 minutes of daily practice is worth more than 60 minutes once a month. But even if 60 minutes once a month is what you get done, that is better than no minutes that month. So really looking at how you can fit these things into your lifestyle, into your routine, but also understanding that self-mastery requires discipline and commitment. And it really is only when we are committed to our practices that we start to, to really feel the magic and the potential of where we can go. Wishing you a beautiful day or evening further and I look forward to seeing you on the mat soon again.